Jimmy, you provided the voice of uh, Pooh and Tigger for over 30 years, but it's, up until now anyway, all been animation. This is a very different vision of, of Pooh and Tigger. How did you react to that idea when it was first put to you? Well, I just thought it was brilliant. You know, and, uh, you know, Mark Forster, his vision is so beautiful. You know, it's so whimsical and it's such a beautiful approach. And, you know, think about it. It's, uh, you know, what if Christopher Robin grew up? left the Hundred Acre Wood behind and went out there into the real world and got absorbed into that nine to five, uh, you know, grinding wheel. And uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of brilliant. I think it's fantastic. It's a, it's a beautiful reimagining of characters that everyone's familiar with. And it takes them into unfamiliar territory. And uh, you, you know, you're, folks, you're gonna just have to see the movie. <laughs> I'm gonna stop there, how about that? <laughs> and you usually think of voice actors like yourself being alone in the studio all the time. Mm -hmm. So how much of an opportunity did you get to act, say, with Ewan McGregor, Christopher Robin himself? Uh, well, we've been having a bang up time after the recordings were done, but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, in fact, we actually joked about it. It's like we're old friends who have uh, been chatting together for months, just never in the same room. And, uh, and we, we fixed that recently, but of course, uh, you know, the, we record first. Uh, they take that on set for the principal photography and they've got the, the little stand-in uh, dummies for uh, Pooh and Tigger and Eeyore and the gang. They do the recording at that point, the, the photography at that point, and then back into the studio for more CGI and then I go in and refine it and it was quite a process. And it came out, I think, beautifully. I just, kudos to the gang, yeah. You have Winnie the Pooh in the background as I'm talking to, but of course the other um, character that you voice is Tigger and everybody thinks of him as being sort of over-enthusiastic and bouncing around all over the place. How do you keep him fresh? Well, you just gotta have a, a fresh bounce. There's nothing to it but to do it. Just get out to him both. <laughs> Will you join me? <laughs> do, so do you ever ad lib or do you stick very, very closely to the script? Uh, I, I almost only ad lib. No, I, <laughs> I, well, since they wrote it, I, I give them the as written occasionally. But, uh, but no, uh, actually there wasn't as much uh, in this project, uh, ad libbing, I should say. But, uh, but the answer is very much yes. You know, I've, uh, you know I've, I've been taking liberties with these guys for years and maybe I'm pushing the boundaries, but so far so good. But don't tell anyone. So none of Tigger's malapropisms are yours then? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of references in the film to doing nothing. Having just talked about Tigger, I wondered how good you were at doing nothing. Uh, I wasn't that good at it. Uh, I just, you know, I gotta, you're, you're lucky I don't have a pair of drumsticks in my hand right now because it's just something I do with all that nervous energy. But I will tell you that uh, sometimes doing nothing will lead you to the very best something. I think a very wise bear once said that. I think so too. And I didn't write that one. <laughs> Jim, thank you very much oh, indeed. My pleasure. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Frida. Thank you.